the director's background as a documentary filmmaker, how did that help the process for this film? Well, um, I didn't, I, I mean, I'd seen um, Murder Ball mm -hmm. before I knew or, or met Henry. Um, and I just, I mean, it's a, an amazing documentary. But that doesn't necessarily translate to, I mean, for, for a filmmaker, that doesn't mean that you're a, a great narrative filmmaker. <clears throat> so I wasn't sure. All I knew was that I was blown away by the script and I fell in love with the character and I was really excited about the project. But you obviously need to, con no pun intended, but connect with the director and really feel that, you know, you, that you're excited about working with that director, that filmmaker. Um, so there was nothing for me to watch. It wasn't like sometimes your agent will send you like screeners of the director's previous work, but this was just a documentary and some commercials. So, um, but I was shooting a film called What Maisie Knew in New York at the time, and Henry lived next door to my hotel and would just pop over and we would sit in my in, in the lobby of my hotel for like five hours probably and just talk about Derek and 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 the relationship between Derek and Cindy and. He was, I was just, uh, I was like, I got to work with this guy. He's so brilliant, so intelligent. And just the way he talked about how, how intrigued and interested he was and it, it, talking about Derek and his background and who he was. And we started like, just like, you know, bouncing ideas back and forth and playing around with it, how we could tweak it and change it. And I just felt like, my gut feeling was just like this creatively is going to be so much fun. I just got to work with this guy. So it was everything you hoped it would be? Oh, more. Than, I mean, he, it was, and Henry's one of my best friends today. He's just, I love him to death. I mean, he's phenomenal, phenomenal guy and a, just a brilliant filmmaker. Yeah, it definitely, when I got out of that theater, it's like, I don't want to look at the internet. I don't want to go on the computer. I want to throw everything away. It definitely makes such an impact. Right. So, but at the same time, like, I didn't feel... I would have an issue with it if I felt that it was preachy or didactic. If I felt like it's so obvious what they're like, ooh, big bad internet. Like that's not the st the message here. It's not the story. The reason they're having issues, Derek and, and, and Cindy and their relationship, is not because of the internet. It has nothing to do with it. He's an ex-marine dealing with PTSD. He can't even talk to his wife about the fact that he can't sleep at night. Mm -hmm. Um. So in it, it becomes a distraction. Sure, sure. It's not the problem per se, but it's a distraction. It's easier to do that than to actually talk to your wife about how you're feeling. Um, and then the internet theft is, in this case, horrible. It's always horrible, but in this case, horrible. But at the same time, almost a blessing in disguise because it's because of that, he feels that he's finally got a mission. He feels like he, he finally gets to do reconnaissance again. And he hasn't done that since he was in the, in, in, you know, overseas in, 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 the, in, in the Corps. And so to do that, and I think that's something happens in Cindy as well. When she sees that, her husband is slowly maybe coming back. There's something, a spark there, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it, 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 it's like, I don't know. I just, and at the end when they're like, there's, there's hope there at least.